looking for magic cards or magic carps, on the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at an Asper Colored Zombies deck as voted on by my Patreon supporters, and the deck also features four copies of Return to the Ranks, the sorcery for X and double white with Convoke, meaning that as we cast it we can tap any number of untapped creatures we control to help pay for the mana cost, this ignores summoning sickness, and we can also tap a white creature to help pay for the white mana cost, so we can potentially cast Return to the Ranks without having to tap any of our lands for mana, which is part of what makes it so powerful. And then we can return X target creature cards with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. And if we take a look at our creature curve, besides our two copies of Diagraph Colossus, we can get back every single creature in the deck. So the return to the ranks is a great way to fight removal heavy decks or recover from sweeper effects. And it's also a way to potentially win the game on the spot, as we have four copies of a Wayward Servant, a 2 mana 2 2 zombie that says whenever another zombie enters a battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life, as well as two copies of Corpse Knight, which is very similar, except it doesn't gain us any life. So if we get back multiple copies of Servant and Corpse Knight, we can potentially just drain the opponent to death thanks to a return to the ranks. Then the reason to splash blue in the deck are for the four copies of Blade Stitch Scab, the 2 mana 2 3, giving all their zombies we control plus 1 plus 0. So a nice 2 mana Lord that we can get back with Return to the Ranks that will significantly increase our pressure. And speaking of increasing pressure, we also have the full playset of Champion of the Perished from Midnight Hunt, the 1 mana 1 1 zombie, saying whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so this will grow very quickly and deal a ton of damage. Then we also have the full playset of Crib Breaker as one of the most important zombies in the deck, a 1-1 that can tap three untapped zombies we control to draw a card at the cost of one life. So this also ignores summoning sickness, so we can start drawing cards as early as turn two with it. And we can also pay two mana, tap it to discard a card and create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So this can maybe help us discard lands in the late game to still give us an extra zombie. And then the full playset of Stitcher's Supplier doesn't need an introduction, a 1-1 zombie that when it enters the battlefield or dies mills 3 cards, so perfect for setting up our return to the ranks, and just having access to a 1 mana zombie is already quite valuable in this deck as a way to enable Crib Breaker and trigger our various other zombies. Then at 2 mana we also have the full playset of Undead Augur introduced in the latest historic jumpstart, a 2-2 zombie wizard saying whenever the Undead Augur or another zombie we control dies, we draw a card and we lose one life. This is not a May ability which can sometimes get us in trouble, but hopefully the life gain of Wayward Servant can make up for it, and then of course a great way to draw more cards against removal heavy decks. Then we've got two copies of Mire Triton, a 2-1 a zombie with Death Touch that when it enters battlefield mills two cards and gains two life, so it can help offset the life loss from Crib Breaker and Undead Augur, and helps set up a return to the ranks as well. And then we've got two copies of Lasso Tap Reaver, a 1-2 zombie that when it enters a battlefield makes an additional 1-1 a zombie army token. The reason we're only playing two copies of Lasso Tap Reaver, because it is a great card in the deck, as it helps us enable a turn to Crib Breaker for instance, and helps trigger cards like Champion of the Perished, and then cards like Wayward Servant, Corpse Knight multiple times, also great with the Blades Discab. So the Lasso Tap Reaver is very good in the deck, but it does have diminishing returns, because if we play a second Lasso Tap Reaver instead of making an additional 1-1 token, we would put an additional plus one counter on the existing zombie army token, so then it's a lot less exciting. And then at 3 mana I'm also trying out two copies of Diagraph Colossus, a 2-2 zombie that enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each zombie card in our graveyard, so it can potentially be quite large, and whenever we cast a zombie spell we create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token, so it can also help us go wide and enable our various other zombie synergies. Then the mana base faces quite a few challenges, we need double white to eventually cast return to the ranks, although we can use our white zombies to help pay for that as well. Then we need blue for our blades discab, so I didn't find any room for utility lands like maybe a Phyrexian tower, which has good synergy with the supplier, just because a tower doesn't really help us cast most of our creatures early on, and I also didn't have room for any value lands like castles or creature lands. But we do have four copies of Unclaimed Territory, which can name Zombie and help us cast our zombie spells, just doesn't help with Return to the Ranks all that much. We've got eight Shocklands with Watery Grave and Godless Shrine, as well as two basic swamps, and these are all great at enabling our Isolated Chapel and Drowned Catacomb, which is also why I didn't include any of the pathways, since we need a sufficient number of swamps in the deck for Chapel and Catacomb. 
and then finally four copies of Concealed Courtyard, which comes into play untapped if it's one of our first three lands. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Supplier into probably turn two servants. I guess we'll play the courtyard first. And then we would love to draw a return to the ranks. Not sure what we're up against yet. Blue green, maybe Merfolk. Nope, some sort of energy combo deck instead. Alright, so play servants. And then next turn I can maybe go Corpse Knight into another Supplier. So we could see an Aetherworks Marvel on turn 4. Which can cast card like Ulamog or Ugin, who knows. For now, I think I wait on Diagraph Colossus, although... I guess I could play Colossus now. If the opponent can't kill it, it will make a lot of zombies next turn, and it is going to be already quite large. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. And then don't really want to trade Servant for Refiner. They might have the Harnessed Lightning as removal. Alright, land comes into play tapped, so don't need to fear Aetherworks Marvel just yet. Another Rogue Refiner. Alright, as long as they don't play Marvel, we'll be okay. So, don't think I need to play Undead Augur. Let's just go Corpse Knights into Stitcher Supplier. And start draining the opponents. Sadly, milled return to the ranks. Do I want to trade Colossus for both of their creatures? I think I'll wait one more turn. And then next turn, if we draw lands, we can double spell. But we could just be dead here to a Marvel, but never mind. Opponent explodes. They're just too far behind. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems pretty good. Only problem is Chapel coming into play tapped at the moment, so hoping to draw one of our 10 swamps. But we still get to go champion into another champion. And then turn 3 we get to play a couple more 1-drops. So name Zombie. Facing Watery Grave, so it could be a more controlling deck. Faithful Mending, never mind, so maybe a Reanimator deck instead. Elish Norn discarded, and our opponent already has Unburial Rites to reanimate it turn 4. Luckily we did draw a Watery Grave, but might still be too slow here. Well, we can only do our best, which is champion into another 1-drop. And I guess we'll make that Crib Breaker. Question is whether I want to draw or hit for 3. Like, am I going to eventually draw with Crib Breaker? Or am I just going to be attacking is a question next turn. I would maybe want to go Servant into another 1-drop. Yeah, I guess we'll play Supplier for now. And I'll attack for 3. I mean, at least the champions we can get large enough to survive the minus 2, minus 2. But then we still need... A way to eventually win the game past Elish Norm, which is going to be pretty tough. Opponent could discard something else to reanimate instead. Extinction event, so the fact that they discarded it is probably bad news. It looks like maybe a one mana removal spell incoming. Bone Shards discarding the charm, which they're very far from triple blue. Alright, so next turn, presumably our opponent can reanimate Elishnorn with Unburial Rites. So what's the best I can do in the face of that? Might still be Wayward Servant into like a Stitcher Supplier to grow the champion. 
or I can draw with Crib Breaker in the hopes of maybe finding like an Undead Augur, digging towards a return to the ranks, which might be our way to win the game. But uh, yeah, we don't have a way to remove Elishnorn. So this is tough. I guess we'll start with Crib Breaker. And then maybe I should draw now in the hopes of finding an Undead Augur to draw a few cards as opposed to attacking for three. All right, we did find a return, but probably still not going to get to cast it in time. So I guess I'll play a Supplier now. Two mill more cards. So we'll have a nice full graveyard for return to the ranks. All right, opponent actually did not have the fourth lands. Has to flashback mending. Okay, so how much damage can we deal here? Feels like quite a bit. I could play Servants, Knights, and then reanimate Servants and Scab. It seems like that's worth a shot. And then a the question is, do I get back two or three creatures? I guess I could back even more. So we'll return for three. Get these back. Opponent is at 12, and then we'll smash for 10. And I can still use Crib Breaker to draw a card. So, I think we're gonna beat an Elishnorn here. And yeah, her opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Sadly, can't keep this one, but it's very close to being a great hand with like a turn one crit breaker, turn two reaver, can start drawing right away. But if we don't find land two, this is a bit of a disaster. Now that being said, we're on the draw. So I've got two draw steps to find a land. We've got 24 lands total. So it's not impossible for this hand to get there, but still feels a little too risky. All right, this seems better. Although still actually not great, since we're missing the blue force scab this time. But I guess I'll bottom a return. And then, yeah, hoping to find some blue mana. So if this hand is very light on action, but supplier milling a couple zombies could still make this hand functional. And augur is certainly a good draw. So let's see what we're up against. If it's mono green elves, we could be in trouble. Although milling double servants, nice. And looks like elves turn to Marwyn. We'll start generating a lot of mana. So probably go for the mana efficient undead augur. And then next turn I can look into uh, maybe casting a return to the ranks already. I'm happy to chump with a supplier. But our opponent's probably tapping Marwyn for mana as opposed to attacking with it next turn. So I'll get into one damage while I can. Alright, there's Collected Company. Finds Archroots and Elite. Yeah, those are pretty good. If Marwyn attacks, I might be tempted to block, but... Opponent's going to use it for mana. Three mana remaining for an Elvish Clan Caller. Not a bad turn three. Sentinel to boot. 
Well, I've got double supplier. Maybe our plan is to just uh, play a couple suppliers, chump with them to fill the graveyard. But if I chump with too many suppliers, I wouldn't be able to cast return to the ranks to begin with. Right now I could return for three. I could get back the Lord and the two servants, although the Death Toucher is also kind of appealing here as it can block Marwyn profitably. Or I could play another supplier and then wait until next turn to cast return to the ranks, although I'll be chumping quite a bit in the process. So I think we return now. And then get back the Mire Triton as well. And then we're really hoping to find another return to the ranks at some point. Ooh, Fierce Empath can get Crater Hoof Behemoth. That's the perfect curve topper here. Yeah, our opponent had an impressive draw. Turn 4 kill with a lot of spare damage. Alright, not much we could do. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is okay, mana a little bit sketchy, but as soon as we find one white source, the servant can also help cast return to the ranks. Aha, uh -huh. turn one secret keeper, so this must be a high toughness aggro deck. So, play supplier for now. Our deck is pretty good at like chumping and getting value that way. So, our early game, we can trade away the supplier pretty easily. Although, in a way to draw a card with Crib Breaker first, Chapel a good draw. I think I still double Crib Breaker here. And then I can chump with the supplier after drawing a card with Crib Breaker. Now. I have to chum block while I can, because their opponent could play Tetsuko at some point to make their creatures unblockable. So we'll chump now. And then we're filling the graveyard for return to the ranks here. Alright, so to go Servant into Crib Breaker, and then Crib Breaker could chump once again. And then looking at our graveyard, there's Servant and Corpse Knight, so potentially a lot of damage. Opponent attacks. So if they have double tower defense here, they could kill us if we don't chump both. If I chump both, then they're probably just not going to cast it. Next turn, I would like to cast a big return to the ranks, so the more creatures I lose, the weaker it gets. So I think we just chump turtle and then just lose if they have double tower defense here. But I just don't feel like we are going to be in a good spot if we start double chumping now. Right, opponents goes to damage. I guess we can tap the zombies later here. Alright, so opponents patiently waiting on their tower defense. Or whatever it may be. Don't know if this deck... Place Collected Company would be a little surprising, but I guess not impossible. That's a lot of return to the ranks right here. So if I play Watergrave untapped, I can return for five. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And hope there's no counterspell, otherwise we're dead on board, but I think uh, I'm okay with that, so... 
X equals 5, get back servants, corpse knight, and then we just want chum blockers, supplier, reaver, and I guess we'll get back uh, scab as well. Alright, that worked. And we could return to the ranks again. Opponents at a mere one life. So return for how many creatures can I get back? Three? Probably wanted to tap other creatures to keep my chum blockers on defense here. But assuming the first one resolved, I'm guessing the second one will resolve as well. So yeah, getting to see the power of the Convoke on Return to the Ranks, letting us combo off here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Supplier into maybe turn to servants, which can help cast or turn to the ranks if we find another white source or white zombie. That's one of the problems with territory is that it doesn't cast or turn by itself. Alright, that helps. So, courtyard it is. Up against green white, so maybe a human's deck. Never mind, an enchantment deck. The cool thing about our zombies is that they can win through the Solemnity 9 lives lock since they just drain the opponent. For now, do I want to play Servant already? I guess that's fine. Name Zombie. And then next turn, can maybe play the Scab or Triton, we'll see. Another Weaver, so opponent's ramping nicely, but does not have a third land. So, this turn... Can play Scab and attack. And then next turn maybe Triton into a return to the ranks right away. The lower we get them with regular damage, the less work we need to do with draining them to death. Sterling Grove, so they've got 6 mana here, presence, 4 mana left. As their opponent can start drawing, and a borrowed time, gonna get rid of my servant unfortunately. So that's one of our win conditions gone, so I'll need to find another servant or a corpse knight. Hopefully with Triton here. And I'll keep the white mana untapped. I uh, did not find one. So... Yeah, now we're in trouble. Because we'll need to draw one of our win conditions. Don't think there's a point in me casting Return to the Ranks right now. Although I guess I could get back Crib Breaker, which helps me draw towards more stuff. Problem is, your opponent could also get a Rest in Peace, so I might lose my Graveyard here if I don't go for it now. So I guess we'll go for it now. X equals 3. And then get back Crib Breaker for sure. And probably just scab in another Crib Breaker as insurance, because our opponent's not going to be killing our stuff. Alright, and then a Crib Breaker can draw enough turn. And then we'll need to find another of our Drain Zombies. But with Double Weaver, opponent's got a ton of mana, so they can quickly combo off and potentially present lethal with a Sigil of the Empty Throne making a few angels. So they might not even need the Nine Lives Solemnity lock, although there's the Nine Lives. Yeah, before Borrow Time resolved, I liked my chances, but exiling that zombie is problematic. Opponent goes for Scab. We'll draw first. Alright, 
not the best set of cards. Can use Crib Breaker to make more zombie tokens as well, discarding our lands. Back up Sithis just to draw two. And there's a Solemnity to go with the Nine Lives. Opponent's also gaining life with Sithis, so... We've got our work cut out for us, and with Double Weaver and all this card draw... Our opponent will definitely find a way to end the game before we drain them to death, I think. Alright, Lazatab Reaver. I guess we want to draw first to find a drain creature before attempting to uh, play more creatures out. Return to the ranks, although my graveyard's empty. So I guess we'll play Reaver. The uh, amass token denied by Solemnity is pretty funny. Longer. Approach of the second sun is the opponent's win condition instead of sigil, perhaps. Opponent's playing many of the three mana removal spells, and uh, they're gonna find that approach pretty quickly. They might be able to just win right now. All right, so sadly our opponent was able to uh, deny our promising start. But I think this matchup is winnable. Again, the fact that we can beat Solemnity plus 9 lives is very important. The one problem is a lot of the opponent's removal is exile-based, so it doesn't trigger some of our creatures like the Undead Augur. But with the uh, double Weaver starter, opponent was just a little bit too explosive here. There's an approach on top, so they need to cast one more white enchantment. And then approach will do it. All right, GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. I think we've got a keeper here. Lands are not ideal, but turn one champion can still start growing pretty quickly. And then Crib Breaker can draw more cards, hopefully find some untapped lands facing a Lurus deck, so turn one Fable Passage points towards some sort of Arcanist's red-black deck. In which case, I think I still play Champion, although it's somewhat likely to die on the spot. So I could go with a turn one Stitcher Supplier instead. I guess I'm okay with the Champion dying. Would just be nice to get it above two toughness so it can survive like an Unholy Heat, but Getting it to three toughness in one turn is going to be kind of tough with this hand. I would have to wait until I can play champion and two author one drops in the same turn. Which I guess could be feasible, but... If I just play turn one and they don't have removal, I could have a 3-3 three, three on turn two. Right, opponent fetches island instead, so maybe it is a spirit dancer deck after all. Never mind, a mill deck, maybe a rogues, and a rune cramp. So if we find a copy of Return to the Ranks, we could punish them. For now, we're just gonna keep on curving out. Probably don't need to play Stitcher Supplier if the opponent's actively trying to mill me. So I could attack for three or draw a card. I think I'm still in favor of drawing a card. Need to find that return to the ranks to win the game. So far, a nice collection of creatures in the graveyard already. And we'll draw a card end of turn. Thieves Guild Enforcer mills a couple more. Already a 3-2 death touch. 
and a drown. That's fine. Would rather have them use it as removal as opposed to keeping it as a counter spell for a potential return to the ranks. Okay, so... Don't really want to play Stitcher Supplier. Although it is my only one drop right now. So I might have to play it anyway. So I could go Corpse Knight into Supplier. And then I guess I'll wait on drawing. Or I could draw now in the hopes of finding a different one drop. Which is also reasonable. At least we didn't mill a return. And then next turn the scamp could also increase our pressure, especially if they attack with the enforcer. Alright, there's a return milled, sadly. Off one mine to draw to. So pretty similar to the old standard list. And a thought cease to have a look. Takes the scab. Alright, so we'll start here. And then a crib breaker can also make additional zombie tokens potentially. Put in debating whether they want to counter this or maybe kill the corpse knight. So that resolves. So I could draw two cards right now in the hopes of finding a two-drop to play. Uh, the zombie does come into play untapped, so I can use that to use the Crib Breaker's ability as well. So I think what I'm going to do to play around another discard effect is just uh, do this all end of turn, basically. can make a zombie and then draw two cards so we don't get... Uh, Anything discarded by another thought sees. And our win condition is mostly going to be Corpse Knight draining the opponent. Although we could eventually find another scab to start attacking. We're halfway our library right now. Opponent puts Lurus in hand. And I'll discard Courtyard, even though our opponent knows about territory, so there's part of me that wants to keep that information hidden. So we'll draw. Scam's nice. Would be great to find return to the ranks here, as we can maybe go scab, get it countered or killed, and then still return. This can be a champion instead. So we'll start here, then play scab. And then I could technically still draw into a return and cast it. Our opponent counters the scab. Okay. So. Let's use Crib Breaker. Things that aren't attacking this turn. I guess might want to use a Crib Breaker to make another zombie. This seems fine. Alright, that Augur's not bad. Zombie. Play Augur. And then the 2 2 token definitely can attack. Opponent trades, we'll get to draw. Don't have the mana to cast a return at the moment, but we'll see. Opponent can play Lurus to replay the Enforcer, which is probably why they made that trade. But they only have the two black mana. Fatal push killing Corpse Knight is acceptable, no need to tap it with a crib breaker since I wouldn't be able to use it twice anyway. So 
So two unknown cards in hand, so we're starting to take over the board. Opponent can play Lurus, but be unable to replay their uh, Enforcer. Sadly, they just milled two more copies of Return to the Ranks. So we only have one left in the deck to rely on. Alright, so it's going to be a much more difficult game now. But our opponent is at 10, so it doesn't really take a whole lot to kill them. I think I still need to draw. Another Crypt Breaker, Augur. So where do I start? I can play another Undead Augur. have to be careful I don't die to damage from losing too much life. Let's say we uh, play Augur. Then use Crypt Breaker. Like so. Oh, nice. That was a good draw. So I can play Scab. And then probably start swinging. Do I want to leave anything back? No, this seems fine. For double blue, I don't expect much instant speed interaction. Probably should have tapped Reaver as opposed to the zombie army. In case I draw the second Reaver. A sweeper would be bad here, as we would just end up dying to our own undead auger. Alright, opponents at 7. 16 cards remaining. But they don't strike me like a deck playing Tasha's Hideous Laughter. It's more of a rogues deck using Mill as a way to enable their rogue synergies. Bones looking at their graveyard, so this might be the Agadim's Awakening. And yep, gets back Lurus and Enforcer. Mills for two. Another Wayward Servant, so can just drain my opponent to death here. Thirteen cards left. Let's draw. And uh, I mean, I could also be attacking, really. But this is more stylish. All right. And there we go. So it didn't draw. Return to the ranks against Mill, which would have been even more backbreaking. But I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Good curve of a champion. Two drop could be either Reaver or Scab. And then Colossus can help us make more tokens as well. Up against turn one Mountain. And Goblin Cavalier, so the Red-White Hammer deck, presumably. Alright, I'll... Um, Probably play Reaver here. And hit for three. And hopefully they don't have hammer into the pump spell. Alright, Champion of the Flame instead, that's fine. Augur's not bad, but Probably want to play Colossus first. Name is Zombie. And attack with the team. Currently can't cast Return to the Ranks since we don't control a white creature or a second white land. Rune of Speed on Champion is okay. And a Colossus Hammer. Alright, so next turn we could see them equip Colossus Hammer with either the Pump Spell or with uh, Brunor. So that could be problematic, but I guess my best bet is playing the Scab. And 
and then Colossus and Champion of the Perished could attack. If opponent trades Colossus for Champion of the Flame, they can still equip Gavalier. Maybe I want to attack with everyone instead. And I'm fine if they eat one of my two pirate creatures. Because I wouldn't be necessarily dead next turn. If they equip Hammer, it's plus 10, plus another 2, plus maybe 2 more from Bruinor. So we're talking 18 damage. So, seems fine. Alright, Podon chumps and eats a 2 part creature. And then next turn, the second Blades this Cab should be able to get us across the finish line. Right, it's going to be a Maul of the Skyclaves, that's acceptable. It's an 8-7 first strike on defense. And I get to play another Scab and attack with the team. And then if they block the Blades' of Scab, I lose the plus one plus a bonus because of first strike, but we still get there thanks to the champion. So we would get there no matter what. Alright, sweet. So yeah, we got to see our Asper zombie stack in action and even managed to pull off some nice return to the ranks, which is always satisfying if you get all those triggers from your Wayward Servant. So yeah, very happy with how the deck turned out. I think the addition of Blades Disc Cab over the regular black-white version is worth it, even though the mana base is a little bit rough at the moment. Maybe we'll get more dual lands in the future to make it a little bit better. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.